Hi, today I'll show you how to turn this into this using just this. Let's get started. Before we start, I wanted to warn you that I'll be using chemical products to etch the PCB. So if it's your first time using them, please read carefully the instructions and safety advice. And don't hesitate to ask the maker community, they'll be happy to help you. Okay, so I've been checking for different ways to make PCBs with a 3D printer and two options come quite often. The first option would be to turn a 3D printer into a small CNC machine and the other one to make a custom head to attach a pen to paint over the copper parts. Both methods are great, but I wanted to test if it was possible to get good results without modifying a printer. And this is how I did it. Okay, so let's start drawing our PCB. I'll be using Illustrator for this, but you can use Inkscape if you want. Basically the tools are the same and very easy to use. So let's, let's see, let's start. Okay, let's make it two millimeters thickness for the lines. Okay, let's make this red so we can see it. No border. There you go. And place it one by one. The correct place. Then square four millimeters. Place it, circle, four millimeters, that's fine. And basically you have to copy and paste everything and place it in the correct place. So maybe I'll skip this part and show you the, the result. Okay, so you'll probably end up with something like this. And you have to merge everything together. And now save this as an SVG file. And let's switch to Blender. Okay, so let's move on to Blender. You can use different software, but I like this one. So you have to import your SVG file. And you will see that you have different curves. You'd have to select all of them and then by clicking alt c you can turn them into mesh and then ctrl j to merge them together let's switch to edit ctrl and circle and by pressing ctrl j you make sure that all the points are selected then you have to extrude it a little bit in this case, just a little bit is enough because we can change afterwards the height in the slicer. Okay, so let's open now the slicer um, and then open your S STL file. You see that, you see here it's very small. I forgot to tell you before that um, you have to take notes of the measures of your piece in, in Illustrator or Inkscape. So let's scale this according to these measures. So it was 57.71 and then Okay, we'll give here the, the height of one layer because we don't need more and it will be faster. So I'm going to make a thick layer here. So that would make, yeah, that should work. And now let's see the, the other parameters. Again, I didn't tell you before, but you can use any other slicer. Because basically the, the parameters that we are using are very, very basic. Maybe in the future I'll be experimenting with different parameters, but you can use any slicer for this for this test. Okay, so let's go with low 
because it's the height we have said before. No rotten spots. Okay, temperature for flexible filament. At least for mine. 235 was okay. Quality. Make sure to make one shell. N 100% infiltration. N okay, speed. Maybe 25 millimeters is too fast. But I will try with this. And for traveling, I would say I would recommend to go as fast as possible because probably it will minimize stringing a lot. So let's export this and we are done. Okay, let's start with the fun part. For this test, I'll be just making one PCV. So I want to mark the exact place where it will be printed and to paint small lines as a reference. The next step would be to level your build plate so the PCB fits. Of course this step will be different in every printer, but the PCB plus a piece of paper thickness should be fine. Prepare and clean the PCB before printing and try to keep your greasy fingers away from the surface. We can place now our PCB over the guidelines on the build plate and secure it with some tape. We are ready to print over our PCB. And here's the most important part of the video. I'm using flexible filament. I've noticed that it gets stuck very well to different surfaces. And I assumed it would be hell trying to do the same with PLA or ABS. As I'll show you after, I was right. If you try this method, it would be super helpful to let everybody know in the comments how it came out for you and which filament you're using. I'm using regular Ninja Flex. This print took around 2 minutes to complete, and it wasn't perfect. There are some printing parameters that can be optimized, but I think it was fine for the first test. Here's a photo of the result. As I told you before, I tried with PLA too, but I only got a ball of plastic. Now it's time to prepare our etchant. There are different products in the market, but please follow the instructions and ask an expert because all of them can cause damage on your skin or eyes in case of contact. Be sure to be in a well ventilated place. Once we are done, we can put our PCB inside and wait patiently. From time to time, you can move the PCB or the action gently to accelerate the process. I didn't want to exaggerate because I wasn't sure if the filament would come off. Here's some footage of the progress. It took around 20 minutes. Once we don't see any copper, we can take our PCB out of the etchant and wash it with water. And finally the satisfying part. Let's remove the filament and reveal the result. 
As you can see, there are some imperfections in the places where the filament density was lower. But it doesn't affect the functionality, and after polishing you can barely notice it. Overall I'm super happy with the result, and I can't wait to make improvements and test how far I can go with this method. If you liked it or you want to share your experiences, please let us know in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe. It's the first video of the channel, so it would help me a lot to keep doing stuff and sharing it with you. Thanks for watching.